This is Sam in Montana, and in my last video, I started coloring this particular hollow form. And I had a bunch of hollow forms, they're going to be urns, in different stages of completion. So in my last video and this video, I'm going to continue working on some of those hollow forms and show you coloring and reverse chucking and some other aspects of completing these hollow forms. So enjoy. All right, now let me show you my my airless compressor for airbrushing. Um, I've got a splitter down here and I can put two airbrushes on and I'm going to just connect one of them today. Maybe I'll maybe I'll do two, I don't know. Um, so here's the, the other end of that. And I've got little adjusters on here for the air pressure, okay? And I'm going to put this on the floor because it'll vibrate off the bench. So I'll just pick one of these. They're both, both the same. And I'll hook my, my airbrush up to it, okay? All right, right there. And this particular airbrush is an Iwata and Nest, A-N-E-S-T. Get these at Hobby Lobby. They're excellent airbrushes. So let me get situated here. We'll put some paint in here. Okay, here's a good shot of the dye that I'm using, this trans tint. And this is lemon yellow. I've got a little bit mixed up with some lacquer thinner, and I like to use lacquer thinner. I'll talk more about the airbrush paint when I get going here. So my, my airbrush is a gravity feed, so I'm going to just take a little bit of that from my bottle. It's got a little eyedropper in there and I'll just put a little bit in there. You don't need a lot. Okay, now I've got my fan going. I may need to do a voiceover later on. I'm going to load my, my airbrush up with a little bit of uh, dye. Doesn't need a lot. Okay, now these are double action airbrushes. So when I press the trigger I get air, and I press the trigger and pull it back, I get uh, the fluid that's in the cup. So I've got the yellow in here, and one thing I like to do is highlight the burl areas. Now, I don't want to put a lot on there, but you can see yeah, it doesn't take much. And that really highlights that figure in there. All right, let me just rotate my vessel here. Very happy with that. 
and I'm avoiding these areas right in here. That's just some straight grain that I'm going to fill in with another color. But you can see what I'm going for here where I've got that uh, nice burl figure. Here's a little bit coming around there. Now let me say again why I dye this from the inside originally. Here's a, here's a good example right down in here. This is some short grain. This is a spindle turning and this is some short grain right here where the dye goes, goes through there very easily. And there's some other areas, uh, I don't know if you can see very well, maybe, maybe up in here. But anyway, the only way to get that appearance is to uh, put the dye on the inside and let it wick through to the surface. All right, now I'm, I'm going to shut my camera down and decide the next color. And what I can do here is I'll let this dry. And I may need to apply another application. I've got this thinned down quite a bit. Okay, and it's easier to add more dye than it is to thin it down more. If you get it really heavy, that can cause problems. So it's, uh, you know, that's not too bad. All right, let me show you one more thing while I wait for this to dry. I did apply a little bit more of that yellow on there. I've got the back of this off. I was doing a little bit of adjusting. I'll put that back on there. Um, I'm doing a lot in this video, I'm covering a lot of different topics. Thread chasing and airbrush work and this and that. I'm going to clean out my brush very quickly. Just show you how I do that. This, this little container is awesome. I've got that filled with some paper towel. Here's a little vent right here in the front. And this serves to clean out your airbrush. And also it's just a little stand when you're not using your airbrush. So I've got some lacquer thinner and this is just easy as it can be. Put a you know, little bit in there. I don't know what that is. You can hear my compressor come on. Pull back and I can see the, the fluid level dropping. And this really contains the fumes and the lacquer thinner. Uh, I'm cleaning this out with lacquer thinner. And I can Spray that on a, a white surface to see if I'm getting any more color out of that and it looks pretty good. So that's all you need. That's all it takes to clean that brush out. Not very complicated. And that's the nice thing about using lacquer and lacquer thinner. Alright, I'm ready to apply my next color and what I have selected is some red. It's uh, called Cherry Red. And I'm all ready to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find those areas that uh, don't have a lot of burl figure. And maybe we'll maybe we'll start on the bottom. I don't want to cover up the yellow. I want that to be as vibrant as possible. Come in there a little bit. Now it's a good idea when you're using an airbrush to start off the piece. If I just press this down, I sometimes get some, some spots. So if I, if I start this here and go on to the piece, I have a little bit more control. Now my objection with using red and green is it looks a lot like Christmas. And I got nothing against Christmas, but you know, so I'm going to tone that down probably with some blue. Yeah. 
And I'm sure you can hear my, my little air compressor. All right. Just ran out. The nice thing about an airbrush is it gives you a lot of control. I'm not going very fast here. It really makes you slow down and put this on a little bit slower and more carefully. Let's go up to the top of the vessel. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start over here. You see how that splatters? So I get that going and then go on to my vessel right there. All right, I'm happy with that. I think I'm going to stop there, clean my brush out once again, and find another color. All right, now I said I would talk just a little bit more about uh, airbrush paint. What I have right here in these two bottles are typical airbrush paint. They come in transparent or opaque. And I use them quite a bit to demonstrate just because they're convenient and they come in many, many different colors. I don't like to put this stuff on wood because to me it, it comes out a little bit cartoonish. <laughs> uh, it just covers the grain and anyway, I, I'm not going to talk any more about that. Here's another really, really good product that I, I love as a stain. This is a chestnut spirit stain, which means it's uh, thinned down with denatured alcohol, okay, which is not lacquer, you know, lacquer thinner, but I can also put that into my vessel, and that's the next color I'm going to put into the main event up here that started out green. So what I've got here is uh, some pink, all right, and what I've done is I've mixed red with white. Now one of the challenges in woodworking and wood turning is finding white stain or white dye. And if I mix this with any other color like red, I'm going to get a little bit more of a pink. If I mix this with blue, I'm going to get a turquoise. And whatever you mix up, this is original. And nobody in the history of mankind will ever mix this exact formula up. So let me readjust and I'll put some of this in my airbrush and we'll, we'll continue uh, staining the vessel. All right, now this is probably going to be the last color I use on this particular vessel. Got some nice figure here highlighted. I don't, I don't especially like all this red, just red as it is. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try a new technique, and I've, I've done a lot of messing around with an airbrush. It's just, it's just really, really fun making clouds and flames and that sort of thing. One, one thing you can do when you're making clouds is just cut, a, cut some paper up. And I'm, I'm going to try this on here. I'll just uh, cut a little bit of this up and make it jagged. I'm not trying to make clouds, but what I'm trying to do is make some really, really nice, crisp areas on my, my vessel. So let's, let's just try this, see what it looks like. <laughs> and you think I know what I'm doing? Well, a little bit. Take my my white and red and shake it up really well. Put some in my, my airbrush. Now, as I mentioned before, it, it's really about compatibility. You know, what I'm doing is it compatible throughout, throughout the piece.
Okay, I can I can see it. I don't know if you can get this out of in, in the way. I don't know. Okay. Now you can see it on the the paper. All right. Okay, now you know if you're a woodworker or a wood turner and you're applying a finish, you can't really tell what it looks like until you apply that clear coat, whatever that may be. And I can see where I've been with this latest mixture. It's not bad, but again, I really am not going to be able to see that too much until we put the the lacquer on there. And so far I like this. I think this is a good technique. Yeah, right there. Now, this area right in here where there's some nice burl figure, that really comes through very sharp and there's a, a nice contrast. And that's what I'm trying to create right here. A little bit more of a contrast. Let's, uh, yeah, there's there's some area right there that needs. Okay. Okay, I'm going to clean my brush out. I've got some denatured alcohol here. I've got this in my little little pot and it's a good idea to clean this out maybe even after every color change okay now let me show you one more product that I just purchased this is a lacquer sanding sealer and I probably will use a deft lacquer. If I have a lot of these vessels to do, I may go to my, my Finex uh, spray gun. Anyway, this is a, a lacquer sanding sealer, and after I let this dry, I'll coat this surface with, with this sanding sealer, and then I'll start applying my lacquer. Okay, I'm showing you my latest victim. This was the other little hollow form that I started and I did some different things on this. I actually wire brushed this section right through here and it's going to just add a little bit of texture visually. Anyway, I think it's ready to eventually seal and apply a finish. I'm going to let it dry just a little bit more. So yeah, I like it. <laughs> All right, the next operation is to reverse chuck my hollow forms and deal with the foot. I'll show you what I have chucked up into my headstock, into these jaws. This is a threaded rod with two nuts on the end that lock this in. Okay, and I've got a little cone that fits into the recess in the opening of the vessel. So we'll put this back into my my pin jaws. What I intend to do is have this cone impinge right here to contact the opening and this area right here to contact the inside bottom of my vessel. And I can feel that right there. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up my tail center. And like I say, it's a good idea to end with the same live center that you started with. Let's just uh, rotate this. And that's running about as true as it can get. So as I bring up my, my tail center, 
that rod contacts the bottom of my vessel. Let me just lock that in. I've got two crescent wrenches and I'm going to just lock these nuts right there. That shouldn't go any place. Not a lot of pressure on this. So now I can deal with the bottom here. And I'm going to just simply find a gouge and turn that away. All right, now I'm going to take a quarter inch spindle gouge and remove this uh, tenon. Make sure everything's locked down. Okay, now I'm going to take a parting tool and I'm going to just establish where the, the bottom of this vessel is going to be. My depth is somewhere in here. I'm a little bit, a little bit on the thin side, not too bad. And I'm going to add a little bit of this area down here to my, to my base. Take a look at this now. I had to come up the side of my vessel to blend this in. And I also have to take some stain right here and uh, blend that color in. All right, well, I'm almost there. I've got to apply some lacquer, let my, my dye dry. I was a little bit nervous. Whenever you take that, um, surface back to bare wood you have a an issue blending this in but I think it's going to be okay it's not bad I'm I'm pretty happy with that so anyway um, I got her all done I'm going to just keep uh, whittling this way and this vessel will be completed